Okay, so we're going to show you um, how to place wired chocks, also known as nuts or wires by some people. And uh, wired chocks range from sizes of about that size there, is about the largest that you would find. And you can go right down to a little micro wire, such as one of these. And, and these, these really small wires are usually made mainly for aiding on rather than to actually fall on them. But I personally carry a, quite a variety of very small um, gear like this, simply because when you need it, you need it. Um, and you might only have very, very small wires uh, on hand, or very small cracks in which to, 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 to kind of place them into. Uh, these larger wire chocks by Black Diamond, for instance, this one is rated at 10, 10 kilonewtons. So in other words, just under 1000 kgs. And when you go right down to one of these smaller ones, uh, they will go down to about 380 kgs of their rating. And the very, very smallest ones are not even, they don't even have a rating on them. So you can expect them to blow out very easily at maybe 150 kgs or something like that. They're not to be relied on too much. Wire chocks are known as what the general term is that they are, are p p passive protection. So in other words, they stay in the rock because of the, the constriction of the rock itself. And there I'm placing one of these um, in the rock and it's simply being held there because there's a constriction below it. Okay. Okay, in order to place one of these and I'm using a, a crack going down like that, a vertical crack, First of all, first things first, you must find a crack that has got a constriction in it in the direction that the pull is going to come from, or the force of the, of the person falling on it. Uh, and I, if I look on this crack over here, I can see some constrictions over here. It's not totally, the sides are not perfect, and that's a good thing if you want to place a nut like this. Next thing is, when you want to place it, don't. Don't place it that you take out one nut and then try to find a place in order to, to, for it to go into. You must take this as a bunch of keys, as if you were trying to find the, a, a, a key for a lock and a door. So you take the bunch of them and you decide, and you look at the crack and then you decide what might fit. And I'll choose this purple one and it doesn't fit. So I choose one slightly, uh, slightly smaller, this grey one, and I see that it fits and I pull it down and into the constriction and I see it fits. The both sides of the of the chuck are on the on the rock snugly against it like that. And I'm pretending that the pull will come down uh, in that direction, which is the normal direction that, that, a, that a, a, a nut will be placed in. And it's also good just to give it a bit of a, a seating in like that. Make sure it stays. You unclip all the other chocks, put them away, and then place a quick draw onto it. And again, you can just give it a bit of a, a flick like that to seat it into the rock. Watch again. And you're going to place it, this green wide chock in here. And there it's seating well inside. It's got lots of rock all around it, seat it in, and place a quick draw on it. On wired chocks, they are meant to be placed primarily in that configuration into the rock. But most chock uh, manufacturers make the chocks also able to be placed in that configuration, and you can see that there's a slight shaping there. So, in this example, if I came up here and this is all I had, and I can see it won't go into there, what you can do is simply turn it sideways and then place it into the rock like that. And that is a very secure placement. Okay, when, when you place a wired chock like this, uh, one of the things don't waste time with is that when you see a crack like that, it's very parallel and it's, it's not going to take 
take a, a, a chop very well in that because there's nothing to constrict it with. If you see a crack like that, that's very parallel, you're wanting to think about putting a cam in rather because that can go in. But this thing will not go in, in seat correctly. When you place a wired chop like this and you're wanting to um, attach yourself or the rope to it, you always use a carabiner around the wire part. A, a mistake which people can make and is extremely dangerous is to start doing things like that. That will simply cut through a sling under force and there will be an accident. Another similar one is to place a lark's foot around the, around the wire. Again, that is absolutely a no-no. You do never ever tie yourself on like that. Okay, in order to get a wide chalk out of the rock, there are perhaps three different ways that one, does, one, one can do it. Number one way is you can often just simply push it back with your finger or thumb and it'll come out. The other one is you can try to flick it like this and it will often pop out. If, for instance, it is extremely jammed in and will not, will not come out like that, that's what you've got a nut key for, and the nut key you can simply push it back with, especially if it's deep inside the inside the rock to loosen it up, and out it will come. A chalk like this is so jammed that you can't can't uh, get, get it out. One of the methods is to simply take a, a nut key like this, place it on below or halfway through the through the the chalk like that. And with a large carabiner, often just the tapping motion will get it to loosen up like that. If that still does not work, many climbs there's a, a stone nearby. You can take a small stone and just with a bit, creating a bit more force on the on the chalk, you can give it a good whack to get it out. All right, how to place a hexcentric, or often called a hex. So that's a hexcentric. So shape is a, hex, is a hexagon, and uh, they can be placed like that or like that. And you can see that the wire coming through it is offset, so that the harder you, the, the harder the force on it, the more it wants to turn in the crack, and it bites into the crack in that way, and like that. They also can be placed as a conventional nut because they've got a bevel in that direction and a bevel in that direction on either side. So in, to place it in its conventional manner, simply find the crack that you want to use and place it in. And there it's seated nicely in. All the sides are touching, the two, or the two sides on either side of it, and give it a, give it a, a whack like that to seat it in. As I said before, you can place a hexcentric in a conventional nut fashion like that. And there's an example of it. Seat it in and it'll take a good downward pull, that one. Now, if you climb in areas where you on sandstone rock, and remembering that sandstone is, is put down in layers, and therefore it has lots of horizontal cracks in it. And here in South Africa, we have a lot of that kind of climbing. And that's a place where hexcentrics come into their own. Horizontal cracks like that take hexcentrics very well. And they are still very useful in this kind of a rock. And there you can see a hexcentric placed in a horizontal crack. And they're giving very, very good protection. So I only have an example of six different hex hexcentrics here. Now, this number four... Is the smallest one which I carry but these do go down to a number one and on the other end of the scale you can get a number 11 hexcentric. Now this is a very large piece of gear. Um, you wouldn't normally carry this around with you. Uh, I have one simply because on some climbs I might I know that I might need it um, and you would therefore have it with you on that day but you don't normally carry hexcentrics of this size. They're too heavy, too bulky and you very seldom use them. 
and on a word that if you are going out to buy your first rack of gear, don't bother to buy large eccentrics like this. You want to go for small or medium sized eccentrics. Those are the sizes that you actually end up using. Okay, as an introduction to cams or spring-loaded camming devices, also known as friends. Cams are, were invented back in the 1970s and they changed the face of climbing because they work in cracks that are perfectly parallel and you can even have them a slightly flaring crack also. Different manufacturers have different configurations but if you look at these black diamonds, cams they have two axles here some some people some manufacturers have a single axle these ones say have the double axle and it and it's simply to give more range within the size within the size range there cams like this they go into the rock and their spring loaded uh, the, the spring load is holding them in the rock like that waiting for a force like on that part of the sling and they therefore hold in the rock and I'm going to simply place this one here I've checked that it is the right size I pull the cam in place it there all the cams are touching the rock and it's ready to go so cams come in a variety of sizes and if you look at this very very small one this is a black diamond zero size cam its rating strength rating is uh, 5 kilonewtons, so approximately 480 kgs of uh, weight it can take and it's made for very very small cracks like that and there's not very much movement on these little cams and then if you go to the other extreme you go to a number five and this much bigger and heavier made for very large cracks and it's rated up to 14 kilonewtons so about 1300 kgs the sizes that one uses usually are the small to medium sizes and uh, if you're buying a, a, a rack for the first time go for the small to medium sizes before you go for large. As I said before cams have a large range of sizes that you can you can uh, use them in and uh, as we pull those back you can see the, the size range that occurs there and when you place them, you want to place them into a crack so that these, when, the, when you pull the cams back, there must still be a, a slight gap between the two as they pass each other like that. You don't want to put them in too tight and you don't want to put them in too loose like that. So anywhere in that range is what you're looking for. When you look into this crack over here, you can see it's very parallel and it will in fact take both these size cams so if I place it like that that's a reasonable reasonably good placement if I take this green one I can also place it in and I would tend to perhaps trust the green one um, in that in that position because the cams are probably at their optimal holding uh, capacity on this cam here those cams are getting to the point where you should perhaps go for a larger size. Placing this cam in here and that you can see that the cams are probably at, at the optimal size sizing and that is a very very safe cam placement. Now cams can be placed in horizontal cracks. If you are going to it is better to put the two outer cams at the bottom so that it has more it is more stable in the placement and place it and release it give it a bit of a pull like that just to seat it into the rock in case there's any dust or grit that needs to be bitten through and that is a very very good placement now when you actually place a cam you want to put it in so that it is holding at its absolute optimal within the crack that it's that you're placing it into now if i look at this this crack over here I can see those very parallel sided and there's a little constriction over here 
and bearing in mind that you want the cams to grip onto the rock and expand if a force is placed on them. I can place it in like that, but it would be better if I looked at the crack very carefully, I can see that there's a slight constriction and this little piece of rock here will help to grip the cam and open it up in the event of a fall. And if you're placing cams well, you're going to be looking for those kinds of nuances on the rock, little ripples within here that the cam can grip to. And bearing in mind that there are, there is rock around that is very, very smooth and glassy, and you can have a cam rip out. And if you, in those sort of situations, you definitely must look for places for the actual cams to, 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 uh, to grip on. The other thing is that I placed the cam downwards like that because that, if I fell on it, that's the direction that the fall, the force will come from. And I place it like that, and if I fell on this thing, it would now pull in the right direction. A common mistake is people placing a cam straight in like that. Then when you fall on it, it does that, and you might have a fail on you. Here we have an example of placing a very small cam that will crack there and that placement will give you reasonable protection. When you place a cam, you are going to pull the trigger back like that and we've decided that it's going to get placed in that crack over there. You want to place it in, pull the trigger back and release it. And once it's you, you're happy where it's going to be, be standing, give it a bit of a flick like that, and it'll seat the cam in. One thing you don't want to do is put it too deep inside, that if you have some uh, kind of a, a, a situation where you have to, now nah, that it's jammed inside there, you, you don't want it so deep that you can't reach in to release the cams themselves. Again, you don't want it too far out, but perhaps the optimal place would be in that position, as I show here. When you're placing the cam also, is don't jam it into the crack with it at its very smallest now, and then force it in, and particularly deep inside, that is a way that the whole cam can be, become jammed inside the crack, and if it's very deep inside, you can't get to the cams to help uh, get, get them out. If a cam has become jammed in the crack like that, your first way to try to remove it is by putting the trigger back, not too hard, and trying to maneuver it and work out which way it went in in the first place, and then you can often well, be able to uh, get, get it out. One of the other ones, ways of, of removing them if they're jammed, is you can take the, the nut, nut tool like that and tap it out in that direction. You can also use the hook part of these to pull the cams back. And particularly if the cam, as I'll place it now, I'm placing it quite deep in. And if you can't get your fingers onto the trigger cables, that's why on some nut keys they have those items and that enables you to get the nut key in and get pull the trigger back and you can get it out one of the dangers when placing cams in horizontal or vertical cracks is this is that if i place this cam in it's well seated and it's going to be very, very strong there. But when you place your rope through when you're leading, depending on where you're going to climb after you've been, been uh, after you've placed the cam, if it's vertical straight up, this cam is very safe and should be fine. But for instance, if I was going off at, a, at an angle from there and there was going to be a lot of movement on the, on the cam, one of the, one of the dangers is this, is that you get movement and you can see 
how the cam walks inwards like that. The cams are literally walking inwards and it does one of two things. It either jams up against the back wall of the crack and your, your cam is then jammed and it's hard to, to get out. Or in this case, you'll notice as it goes, it goes into sand and the cams are now no longer holding correctly and your cam placement is no longer safe. What you should be doing, placing the cam, and if you see that you're going to go off at an angle and the cam might get uh, undue movement on it, you can simply take a sling or a quick draw and extend it away and into your rope so that the rope can now move but the cam remains still. One danger also with cams is that these, when you place them, the cams are actually logarithmic spirals and for every unit of force that you place on the sling over here, depending on the manufacturer and depending on the way the cam was actually designed, you're putting approximately 14 times, there's a 14 times ratio here. So one unit there, 14 pushing outwards like that. Now that's what holds the cam in the rock, but you've got to choose your rock very carefully. And I'm going to illustrate this here is that when you pull on this cam, you put such force on the rock, you can actually move the rock to the side. And whenever you place a cam, make sure that you're putting it in very, very sound rock, not between boulders or behind a flake where you simply will push the flake off the mountain or it will just push it out enough that the cam will fail. So to show how much force uh, a cam can, can place on the rock, here's an example. We've got a piece of rock here which looks pretty good. Great cam placement behind it. And I've placed a nut there that is just sitting in the rock. And to illustrate how when I pull on this with not much force, it's going to push that rock slightly to the left. I'm, I've been showing you cams, these are the latest made by Black Diamond Ultralight Cams, they're great, very, very nice uh, gear, but just to illustrate, these are some older cams, or they were made by Wild Country and they're actually called Friends still on these, and the rigid, this is a rigid stem, this is one of the earlier um, flexi stem cams that came out. People sometimes still use these, and just to say that all the metal part, as long as it's got no visible cracks or bends or wear marks or anything like that, there's nothing wrong with these. These things are still perfectly safe and, and strong. Uh, the slings, the slings might need to be replaced. I'm not sure how old this sling would be, for instance. Uh, it probably still is very strong in actual fact, but uh, if you do want to... Uh, use some of these older cams I do suggest that you replace the the sling and you can either get these professionally sewn up with proper bar tacking there uh, or as this person has done they've got a water knot or not, um, holding a, a sling there and in actual fact although this doesn't look that neat or modern there's nothing wrong with it and it is perfectly safe to still use them like that.